All right, so chapter nine is alkenes and addition reactions. So we have different types of reactions, like elimination, substitution. So third category is addition reaction. So let's have a little background about alkenes. So alkenes, remember the functional group, which is your carbon-carbon double bond. So it can be one double bond, or it also referred as one degree of unsaturation. Okay, so one double bond is also one degree of unsaturation. So why is it important? We will learn later on, but just keep one thing in for, for now. Keep this in mind for now, that uh, what double bond also means a degree of unsaturation. Okay? So a double bond can be like this. So when you have the two groups on the same side, or a double bond can be like this. Okay, so when you have one up and one down. Okay? So when you have a double bond like this, we call this as cis double bond, or also referred as Z, and this is called as trans and referred as E. Okay, so we have cis and trans. Right. So let's have a couple of examples. How do you find out cis and trans? Right. So in this case, it's very obvious the two groups facing on one side are one up and one down. So cis together, trans means opposite. Right. How about this? How do you figure out which is cis and trans? Okay. So when you have simple examples, okay, it's easier to see it, but in, in Complex examples like this is hard, right? So we have to follow a process here, okay? So the process is we are focused on these two carbons, right? That's where your alkene is, carbon, carbon. So we divide it right in the middle, okay? So divide it right in the middle, and each carbon has two groups attached to it, right? So this carbon has a chlorine and bromine, and this carbon has a hydrogen and fluorine, yeah? So we go by assigning the priorities, okay? But in this case, we only have one and two groups, okay? So we assign the priorities to each group, okay? So bromine should get the number one priority because that has a higher atomic number and chlorine should get number two priority, okay? In this case, you have hydrogen that should get number two and fluorine should get number one priority, remember? The lowest priority in this case is two because we only have two groups to compare, right? And now we compare, is two and two facing on the same side, one and one facing on the same side? That means this is cis, because they're facing the same side, or also the Z. Right. Let's try this example as well, right? So we have these two carbons, right? So we divide it right in the middle, right? And then assign the priorities. So oxygen gets number one priority, and that's your carbon that will get number two priority, right? <clears throat> if you compare these two right here, so that will get your number one because this is CCC, so that should be number one priority, and that should be number two priority. So two, two, one, one facing, this is also a cis, so or a Z, either way we choose, all right? Now, how do we apply the same logic here? without looking at those bonds now, up and down, right? So remember, we, this is cis and this is trans. So what can I do now is I can do the same process what we did here with this carbon, right? So there's a carbon one and carbon two right here. And what's missing on this is a hydrogen because we need it now. So let's write down the hydrogens because each carbon has a hydrogen, right? And that's your CH3. So let's write down all the groups. So we have a CH3, right? And let's divide it right in the middle. Right. So this gets number one priority, this gets number two priority, number two and number one. Okay, so that is cis. And same thing here, that is your trans. Because when you assign the priorities, now it's a lot easier because then you don't have to look at the groups. Are they facing up or down? Just compare the priorities. Right? So one on one facing on the same side or two on two facing on the same side, that means cis. Or they're opposite, then it should be trans. So let's move on with addition reactions. So if you remember the basic reactions we learned before is when you have addition reaction, you start with an alkene, right? So we start with an alkene, right? So let's highlight those carbon as carbon one and two, right? And then you have two groups, X and Y, right? So this is a very simple example here, uh, reaction. So you have two choices and you have two groups, right? So you have two carbons and two groups. So each carbon gets one group. Right. So carbon one gets X and carbon two gets Y. Okay, so addition reaction actually is exactly opposite to elimination. In elimination, we 
we start with alkyl halide and we get the alkene as a product. But in addition reaction, we start with alkene and we add the halogen or the leading group on the carbon. Right? So they're exactly opposite to each other. Okay? So again, when we do addition reactions, then we start with alkene, carbon, carbon double bond. Okay. And then you add groups across the those two carbons. So in this case, we are only focused on those two carbons, carbon one and carbon two, that has the carbon-carbon double bond. So in this chapter, we will be learning three reactions, addition reactions, starting with double bond. Right? So you have addition of HX, which is hydrohalogenation. X is halogen, so hydrohalogenation. Or addition of water, so you have H2O, H and OH. So addition of water, that's your hydration and hydroboration. Okay, so we'll be only looking at these three reactions, especially we'll be focused on these two reactions. Right. So what I'll do now is I will divide, okay, I'll separate every reaction, okay. Let's call this as our reaction number one. This is reaction number two and three. So we learned reaction number one in detail, then we go after reaction two in detail, and then we'll go after Reaction number three. So reaction three actually has no mechanism. We just really have to learn these two reactions properly. All right, so first reaction is hydrohalogenation. All right, so the basic reaction is if you have a double bond, right, we can add HX, right? So what I'll do is I'll write down HX like this. So H and X, right? So our X can be chlorine, can be bromine, or it can be iodine. Right? So X is a standard notation for halogens. And then we have the H and X across the, across the double bond. Right? So that's your X right here. So we have H and X across the double bond. Right? So that's your basic reaction. Okay? So what is the mechanism of this reaction? how this reaction takes place. All right, so let's look at the mechanism. All right, so for writing a mechanism, what I'll do is instead of writing X, I will make it more specific, such as HCl. All right, so let's have a real example. Then, So you have a double bond and HCl. All right, so what do you expect in your product? You expect in your product one carbon should get the Hydrogen and others should get the chlorine. So remember, we are focused on these two carbons. This is your carbon one and carbon two, right? So one carbon gets the hydrogen and one gets the chlorine. So that should be your product. So it's very easy to predict the product. So what is the mechanism of this reaction? How this reaction is taking place? For that, we need to understand one thing, that what is a double bond? Okay, we haven't done any reactions with double bonds so far, right? But what is, what's the meaning of a double bond, right? So a double bond, I'll just write down in a corner here. A double bond is actually very similar to this. So one bond means two electrons, right? Which is also similar to this, and which is also similar to this, right? So, so that means a double bond basically just means you have two electrons, okay? And that can be, look, can be served as a base, right? So in this case, we are not doing anything new now. We are just doing the simple acid-base reaction, all right? So if you're doing acid-base, then this is your base with electron pair, and this is your HA, okay? The only consideration you have to make here, if I look at the normal base, such as OH minus, right? So if you're looking at OH minus, right? Then in this case, the negative charge is located on oxygen only on one atom. However, in case of an alkene, the double bond is located between the two carbons, okay? Well, that's the only consideration you have to make, and how do we handle the situation now? All right, so let's see. So what I'll do here is I'll just get rid of this and write down the mechanism, all right? So we're still writing the simple acid-base reaction here, okay? So that will be a base, and this will be a acid, okay? So electron pair will attack, to hydrogen, right? So that will go and pick up the hydrogen, right? And leaving group will leave like this. 
point. So base will have to go pick up the hydrogen and it will go on A minus, right? So that will be your Cl minus, right? So we are flipping the double bond like this to form a bond, right? So the carbon here, so let's say you have carbon one and carbon two. So carbon two is getting attached to the hydrogen, right? So carbon two is getting attached to the hydrogen. But in this process, carbon one is losing electrons, right? So you're losing electrons from carbon one, that should get the plus charge. Okay, so losing electrons, that means you should get a plus charge. All right. So this is your step one. And now we are here and we have carbon plus and Cl minus. So carbon plus and Cl minus can come together and form the bond. And that should be achieved the product. So H and Cl. All right, so you got your product. Or you could do other way around. Okay. Both the carbons are the same. So if I open it other way around, then you can get it like this. So you have the H on top and carbon plus at the bottom, and the Cl minus can come in and form the product. So, so H is here and Cl is here. So there's no difference between these two. Okay, so you have the two carbons, you have two options. Okay, H goes on one carbon, chlorine goes on the other carbon. Right, it's a simple reaction, right? So again, we haven't done anything new here. This is simple acid-base reaction. We just had to treat our double bond as a base. All right? So acid-base reaction, also an acid-base reaction because carbon plus is your Lewis acid. So bronzed acid-base reaction and a Lewis acid-base reaction. Okay? Together we get the product. When you have a double bond, we can attach H and Cl across double bond. Right? <clears throat> In this case, carbon one and carbon two they're the same, right? That's what we saw. So either you choose carbon one for hydrogen or carbon two for hydrogen, it's not gonna make any difference because those two carbons are the same. There's a symmetry right here. Right? So when you have a symmetry, those carbons are the same, right? Let's see an example where those two carbons are not the same, right? So carbon two and carbon one, right? In this case, they're not the same, right? So in this case, then you have to be careful where to put the hydrogen and where to put the chlorine. So how do you decide that? Okay. So we have to follow a rule here. The rule is called Markovnikov's rule. So what Markovnikov has said that if those two carbons are not the same, then hydrogen will attach to the carbon that has most number of hydrogens. All right. So how do we apply this rule? We find out which carbon has most number of hydrogens. Okay. So here, how many hydrogens we have? Zero. How many hydrogens we have here? One hydrogen. So new hydrogen has to go to the carbon that has most number of hydrogens. That means when you write down the mechanism like this, then H will go to carbon two because that has most number of hydrogens and plus charge will go on carbon one. So this is your carbon one and carbon two. And the next step, Cl minus will go and attack the positive charge and that will get you the product. So that should be your product. So H goes on carbon two and Cl goes on carbon one. Okay, so you don't really have to write hydrogens every time. So if you can just want to skip hydrogen, that should be your real product. All right, so that's one example where you have carbon one and carbon two are not the same. There's no symmetry here. Okay. Let's do one more example. Okay. So. Let's see this. All right. So if I throw HBr here, let's just change the example. Let's see if I throw HBr here. All right. So again, in this case, we are focused on these two carbons. So this is your carbon one, let's say, and carbon two. It doesn't matter which way you number them. Okay. Carbon one and carbon two. Right. <clears throat> so this carbon is not same as this carbon. Right. In that case, we have to apply the rule. So the rule says that hydrogen will attach to the carbon that has most number of hydrogens. So which carbon has most number of hydrogens? carbon two. So H will go to carbon two automatically, Br will go to carbon one. Right? So that's what we get. So Br will go to carbon one. So we don't have to write hydrogens on carbon one and two, but if you want to highlight those, it's fine. You can keep those highlighted here so you don't lose them. 
So carbon one and carbon two. So H goes on carbon two, and Br goes on carbon one. Right? So <clears throat> let's try one more example here. Like this. Okay. So if you're still doing HBr. So you have carbon one and carbon two. Okay, if you want to pause the video here, you can pause the video, work it out, and then you can look at the answer. But I'll just go ahead and complete it now. So you have one and two. So two has most number of hydrogens. That means H has to go on. So you can highlight those carbons here, carbon one and carbon two. So H will go on carbon two. That means Br will go on carbon one. So that should be a product. All right, so addition reaction, you can see these are very straightforward reactions. Okay. You can write down the mechanism, okay, or you can straight find out the product. Okay, so you expect both type of questions in the exam, but you just have to predict the product, or you just have to write down the whole mechanism. All right, and it's simple. All you're doing just simple acid-base reaction. So acid base and acid base, bronze acid base, loose acid base in combination. So reaction number two is hydration. Hydration basically is addition of water. Right? So we have H and OH. So I kept the same way as H and Cl. So you can see the two groups where we have H and OH. So one carbon gets the H, other gets the OH. So that's a quick way to find the product. Right? If you want to find the mechanism here, the mechanism is a little complicated. But again, we are all doing these acid-base reactions. Right? So in this case, we need H2SO4. It's not just water. Okay? So when you mix water with H2SO4, what kind of reaction is that? All right, so it's going to be simple acid-base reaction because sulfuric acid is your acid, right? So that's your acid, and that's your base. So base will go pick up the hydrogen, right? And this will give you your conjugate acid. So this is your conjugate acid and conjugate base, right? So H3O plus, this is the most important species, okay, we need for this reaction. Okay. So water actually is not getting added directly to double bond. Instead, the reaction actually starts with the hydronium ion. Okay, so this is also called as hydronium ion. So once the hydronium ion is created using the acid-base reaction here, that goes and reacts further. Okay, so that's the list called step one for the acid-base reaction. And step two, hydronium ion reacts with the double bond. Okay? So in this case, then this is your base and this is your acid. Right? So H A and B with electron pair. Right? So you can compare exact same way. So acid base. So base will go pick up the hydrogen. Right? And this will go on A. So in this case, we will get our product. Right? So H goes here. Right? Or other way around. This. Let's keep it the exact same as the example, what you see here. So H goes on this carbon right here. That means this carbon will get the plus charge, right? So if you open it like this, right? So base will go pick up the hydrogen, but we are taking electrons away from this carbon. So that should get the plus charge. And then what you lost here is H2O. So in the next reaction, what happens then? Your electron pair on the oxygen, okay, so that's your negative and that's po positive. So negative positive has to come together and form the bond. So H will stay the way it is, and that will become OH2 plus. Right, so water is getting added to the carbon now. Right? OH2 plus is not a stable product, so that cannot stay as, <clears throat> as a plus charge. So somebody has to come and pick up the hydrogen okay, to get the product. So this is your product right here. So we have H and OH, that's our product. So somebody has to come and get rid of the hydrogen. And don't forget that we have a conjugate base left behind in the reaction, right? So I will call this as B minus. Okay, that's our conjugate base. So B minus can come and pick up the hydrogen. And that will neutralize the charge and that will get you the free OH. Okay, that's what you get you, that's how you get your product. All right. So what I'll do now is <clears throat> let's compare when these two carbons are not the same. Right? So in this case you have carbon one and carbon two. Right? So there's a symmetry. So it doesn't matter where the edge goes and where the OH goes, you're gonna land up with the same product. 
But if you have right, so carbon one and carbon two, they're not the same. Right? How do you quickly predict the product? We still apply the same logic here. Okay? So you apply the Markovnikov rule. What Markovnikov says that when you're adding hydrogen across double bond, and if those two carbons are not the same, H will go to the carbon that has most number of hydrogens. Right? That means OH has to go to carbon one. So carbon one and carbon two. So H goes on carbon two and OH goes on carbon one. Again, don't forget we are doing the hydration here. So H2O and H2SO4. Okay, so quickly you can find the product. Mechanism will be still the same. Okay, you attach the hydrogen, this carbon will get the plus charge, and then the water will come in, okay, and the base will come and pick up the hydrogen at the end. All right, so third reaction is hydroboration. Okay. Hydroboration, we actually don't learn the mechanism here, but this is based on what we learned before. Okay. So this is same as hydration. Right? So we're still adding H and OH across double bond. You can see we're still adding H and OH across double bond. Okay. So what's the difference in here? Right? So let's compare the two reactions. So this is your hydration. Right, so we have H2O and H2SO4, and this is hydroboration. Right, so hydration, we go with Marco, right? So we go with Marconikov's rule, right? H will go to the carbon one, sorry, this is your carbon one and carbon two. So H will go to carbon two, and OH will go on carbon one. Right, so this is the product we get. Right, we saw that before. Right, so this is your carbon one and carbon two. So H goes on carbon 2, OH goes on carbon 1. How do we find out? We go with the rule, which is a Markovnikov rule. Okay? In case of hydroboration, we go exactly opposite. So we reverse the order here. Okay? What it means that H goes on carbon 1 and OH goes on carbon 2. All right. So in this case, we go anti-Markovnikov. All right. This goes with Markovnikov. In this case, we go with anti marco Okay. So anytime you see hydroboration, first thing you have to find out what is the hydration product, which is normal product, and reverse it. Okay. We don't have to learn the mechanism here. Okay. So we have a boron hydroboration. It's coming from the boron. Then we have the peroxide and the base in the reaction. Okay. So there's no real mechanism for this reaction, but we still, have, can, still can find the product. And how do you go about the product again? We first find the normal hydration product, and then we reverse it. All right, reverse the position of the H and OH. All right, so let's try some examples based on what we learned so far, okay? So <clears throat> you can pause the video here, you can work it out, okay, and then look at the answers. <clears throat> so in this case, we have the two carbons, right? So Anytime you see a double bond, we are focused on those two carbons, okay? And we haven't done any reactions with double bonds so far. So anytime you see a double bond, that has to be addition reaction. It cannot be anything else, all right? So identify carbon one and two. It doesn't matter which carbon is one and two, okay? But you are focused on those two carbons, right? And when you have H2O like this, I would recommend you split it like this, H and OH. Okay, that's still H2O, but it looks like two groups now. So you have H and OH. So you know which carbon gets the H and which gets the OH. Right? So you have two carbons and you have two options here. In this case, you are not writing the mechanism. We're just writing the products. Right? So <clears throat> you have carbon one and two. So two has most number of hydrogens. Carbon one has no hydrogen. That means H has to go on carbon two and OH has to go on carbon one because we are doing the, we are going with Markovnikov's. So carbon 2 gets the hydrogen and carbon 1 gets the OH. And since you don't write the hydrogen, you actually don't have to write it on carbon 1 and 2. And you, if you don't want, you can write down carbon 1 and 2. If you don't want to, it's fine. But make sure you keep track of those two carbons. All right? So you either put, a, put circles, highlight somehow, so you don't lose them on the way. All right? In the second example, we have those two carbons right there. Right? So carbon 1 and carbon 2. All right? In this case, we are doing hydration, but we are doing anti-Marco hydration. So we're still doing H and OH across the double bond, right? 
but we are going anti-Markov. Okay? So H carbon one has most number of hydrogens and carbon two has less hydrogens. Right? So if I go with Markov, then carbon one should have the hydrogen and two should have the OH. But since we're going anti-Markov, we swap. So what it means that carbon two will have the hydrogen. So let's highlight carbon one and two again. Okay, so carbon two will have the hydrogen and carbon one will have the OH. So there we are one and two because we are going anti-Marco in this case. In third example, we still have carbon one and two. Okay. Carbon two has one hydrogen, carbon one has zero hydrogens. That means the H has to go on carbon two and OH has to go on carbon one. So that should be your product. This is your carbon one and two. So OH has to go on carbon one. All right, so this is your one and two. All right, so let's look at another variation of whatever we learned so far. Right? So we have an alkene starting with double bond. That means it has to be addition reaction. Right? And we're adding H and Cl. Right? So let's highlight those carbons, right? Carbon one and carbon two. Right? So what do you expect? H should go on this carbon and chlorine should go on this carbon. Right? So you expect this product, right? So That's your carbon one and two, so let's label those as one and two. So you expect H to go on carbon two and Cl goes on carbon one. Okay. But I did not give you that product. Okay. That's expected product, but it did not give you. Instead, I gave you this product. All right. So how do you find the product, right? So in this case, we're actually writing the mechanism. Okay. Because you already have the product given to you. Because you have starting material, you have all the conditions, and you have the product. So basically, how do you get from here to here? All right. Let's find out. But since this is addition reaction, it has to be acid-base reaction, right? So, right? So you have H and Cl, so simple acid-base reaction. So base will go, right? Pick up the hydrogen and electron pair will go on Cl, right? Cl minus. So that should be your step one. So you have your carbon one and two. So two gets the hydrogen and one gets the plus charge. Remember, so when we open it like this, this carbon will get the plus charge, right? And what you have here is the Cl minus, right? So what I can do here is I can bring the Cl minus in and that will get you this product, but I don't want that, right? I want chlorine to go here, right? So if you look at your product, that's where the chlorine is. So how do I move that positive charge from here to here? Okay, so remember we actually learned three different ways you can you can move a carbocation. Okay, this is your carbocation, right? So that's secondary. So this is your secondary carbocation. And we know the secondary carbocation is not the most stable one. Okay. So what it will do, it will try to do all the possible things, okay, to make it more stable. And what are those possible things? It can do one to hydrogen shift, it can do a methyl shift or it can do resonance. Okay, so what are the choices we have here? Right? We don't have a methyl, okay? We only have a hydrogen, okay? We don't have conjugation, so there's no resonance. So it moves the hydrogen, the whole group from one place to other place, right? So it's moving this whole group from one place to other place, and this is called as one to hydrogen shift, right? So it will do Start down at the bottom. So it will do one to hydrogen shift. And in that case, the positive charge will shift to this carbon right here. So secondary changes to tertiary, and that's totally possible. Right? We also have a choice on this side, but we are not moving that on this because the secondary will change to primary, and that's not possible. Okay, it's always about which is more stable. Okay. Tertiary is more stable, so it will be happy to do that. And that's our product is. Now we can bring the Cl minus in, and that will get you the expected product. All right, so you can predict some other way around as well, because I want the chlorine to go here. That means your positive charge has to go to that carbon, right? 
So in the regular reaction, like if you just follow the regular path, then the positive charge would be here. Okay? But you don't want the positive charge here, and how do I move that from here to here? Then think all the options you have. Okay? So in this case, hardening shift is the best option we have, right? because we don't have a methyl or we don't have a conjugation. Okay? But it has to be out of those three. Right? So now onwards, keep one thing in mind, is anything you see which is unusual, okay, there's an unusual thing going on here, right? because you're expecting the reaction to happen between carbon one and two, that's your one and two, but it's happening on the other carbon, it's unusual, that means you think about the shifts, okay, or the resonance. So in this chapter, we will be learning the next, or the last reaction actually, it's not the next one, last reaction that's called ozonolysis. Okay. So ozonolysis actually is a process, okay? and there's a mechanism for that, but we don't, we're not gonna learn the mechanism, but let's, this is a very important reaction, so let's, let's learn it in detail. All right. So the name itself says ozonolysis means, lysis means breaking down. So basically you are breaking down a double bond in this case using ozone. So ozone is the same ozone what you, what you hear all the time, right? So this O3, that's ozone, right? So we're using ozone and DMS. DMS is a solvent for this reaction. So DMS stands for dimethyl sulfide, and there's a structure for it, S sulfur with two CH3s, all right? But that's not really important in this case. What's important is how do you break a double bond, right? Because lysis means breaking. So we are breaking a double bond using ozone, all right? So we have to follow a process here, okay? And the process is you divide the two double bonds. Oh, sorry, you divide the two carbons, right? So we have carbon one and carbon two. And since we are breaking down a double bond, you literally break it right in the middle. That's how you break it, right? So how it will look like if I break the double bond? Okay. We have a carbon one, right? And I break it right here. And carbon two, and I break it right here. Right? That's how it will look if I break it right in the middle. The only thing, the only addition you have to make here is put oxygen on each side. All right, and that's your product. Okay, so you clear the double bond right in the middle and put oxygen on each side. So you get the two products, or it might be three, it just depends what you start with, okay? But this is the basic ozonolysis, all right? We can do some more example with this. Let's say if you have, just simple example, we have a carbon like this, or alkene like this, right? So we have a carbon-carbon double bond like this, right? So first thing what you do is uh, highlight those carbons, right? The carbon one and carbon two. Right, so carbon one and carbon two. And break it down right in the middle, right? So that's what we do in ozonolysis. Break it down in the middle, right? So that's your carbon one, and that's your carbon two. And put oxygen on each side, all right? So most of the time, the process was still the same. Okay, it will stay the same. What's going to be different is what groups attached to that. All right. So what we'll do, we'll do a few more examples just to clarify the concept. But expect few more questions in the exam. A few questions in the exam, either it might be in the find a product or it might be multiple choice question. All right. But definitely there will be a question on this because this is a very important reaction. All right. So <clears throat> this is the basic ozonolysis reaction where you break the double bond right in the middle. What if you have some complex examples like this, right? Again, the basic idea is the same. Highlight those two carbons right there. Okay, let's do one example at a time, all right? So highlight those two examples, sorry, those two carbons, so carbon one and carbon two, right? Write down carbon one and carbon two right here. So that's your carbon one and carbon two, right? right? And you split it right in the middle, right? So carbon one and carbon two split it. So what I'll do is, I will write down carbon one, right? And carbon two, right? So don't forget carbon two is right here. That has a CH2, CH3 attached to it. And carbon one has a CH3. So you put all the groups back to its place, right? And then put oxygen on each side. That should be your two products. Okay, there's your one product and that's your second product. That's your carbon two right there. All right? So you're basically just break it down right in the middle. Right. What if you have a ring? Right. So when you have a ring, again, the rule is the same. 
break down the double bond in the middle. All right. So if I break it down right in the middle, that's how it will look like. And we put oxygen on each side. So this is your carbon one and carbon two. Right. Here you have a carbon one and carbon two. All right, so break it down right in the middle. So carbon two right here and carbon one right here. So put oxygen on this side and oxygen on this side. So you get the two products, one and two. What if we have more than one double bond, right? So in this case, we only have one double bond. If you have two double bonds, then you still do the same thing. You have to break down all the double bonds. It's not just true for one, every double bond. So I'm gonna just go ahead and break it down right in here and right here. So how it will look like? It will look like this. Go ahead and so it will look like this, and then you put oxygen on each side. So break down as many double bond as you have, okay, right in the middle. All right, here we have three double bonds, so we break down it right here, right here, and right here. So I'll just try to keep keep the connection exact same way. So we have. that carbon right there, then that will break it off right here, that will break it off right here, and you have two carbons in between, so that's your one, two, and third carbon should have the oxygen. <clears throat> so you can see how it's breaking off right here. So we still have one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four carbons, right? And these two carbons on top right here, and the two carbons right there. So, <clears throat> if you look at the product here, there's a symmetry here, right? There's a symmetry here. So this is same as this, right? So in this case, we actually did not get two products, so we only got one product because the symmetry. This is same as this, so we only got one product. All right. But in this case, we have one product right here. So that is your one product, right? This is your second product right here. So because they're separated now, and this is your third product right here. So we actually have three products. All right. <clears throat> In this case, we have two. This is one. So either you can write it like this, or you can just write down a straight chain. Right. <clears throat> In this case, we have two products. All right. So basic idea here is when you do ozonolysis, you break down the double bond right in the middle, no matter how many you have. Just break down at the same time, all right? And you'll get the different products. So basically, the different fragments of the product, the starting material becomes your product, all right? So that's our last reaction in chapter nine. Okay, what I will do is I will go ahead and post some more practice questions for you, okay? And I will also post the answers, all right? So, all right, so that's the end of chapter nine.